Hi everyone, Chris Petrie here. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming by. We're just covering the wonderful, uh, exciting color charts that we can create in watercolor to actually make our life so much more simple. So here it is. This is a simple chart we're going to create using our Prangle 16 set. And also we're going to use our everyday Schmincke palette that we use on our videos on so we're basically using both palettes that we use on my on my channel here on YouTube to kind of give you a full color chart of both of these style palettes that I use. So you'll always have a, a reference for your colors and you can learn how to, this, this chart actually covers how you can mix these colors to get all the colors in this palette that I use on a pretty much ongoing basis all the time. I've used this palette and these colors for many, many years now, for probably five or 10 years now, I've been using this same color. Um, mix here, these same colors, this my same palette. And then now you can take your Prang Oval 16, 16 set and switch it on over and mix colors from this set and create the same colors here. So we're going to cover the whole enchilada here of how you're going to create this chart. We use rulers, we use some measurements. If you don't want to get that fancy, we show you how to do some easy shortcuts so you don't have to do as much measuring with rulers and things like that. So we cover the whole thing, the whole enchilada, everything, the whole gamut of information you need to create this beautiful chart of colors. Again, using your Prang Oval 16, as well as our normal Fresh Squeeze 2 paints that we use in our Schmincke palette on my channel. So you always have a reference of how to mix all of your colors to get them to look just perfect the way you want them to as you're working along with our videos and our compositions as we go here, as well as all of my paintings that are in my book. And I hope you'll check out my new book too. It's right uh, in the description down below. And um, I'm hoping you're going to subscribe too. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed, if you're just new here to this channel, please click subscribe. This way you're here, you're on my channel, you're all set, you're ready to go, and you'll be able to follow along here as we go each week. We're always making new videos week after week, month after month, and year after year. So you'll be excited to join in on the watercolor fun that we have here on my channel. And if you're subscribed, that means you're going to be watching along. Even if you don't paint one week or two, you're watching the videos, you're soaking in the information, you're getting all that knowledge that you need to get better at watercolor. And that's what it's all about. Knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you have, the more powerful you're going to be able to uh, work forward in your watercolors and create good results. You want good results. You don't want to kind of stagnate and not make progress. So here on my channel, I'm all uh, in on 100% helping you to get progress all the time in your watercolors. So please join along with me here each week as we go, month after month and even year after year. Watercolor is a journey. It takes time. Don't worry about it. You just start the journey and you make the commitment. I'm going to start the journey and you don't stop. You don't look back. You just keep going forward. And that's all you have to worry about is just keep going forward. Each time you pick up your brushes, your pencils, your paints, your paper, all of that, you're going to be making progress. Okay. That's all that there is to it. Any minute you put into your practicing of your watercolor, that means you're a minute better. And then as each time you go forward, minute by minute, hour by hour, day after day and month after month and week after week, year after year, you're going to get better and better at your painting. So you're the artist. You're here. Let's get started on this video. And uh, you're going to have a lot of fun here. And again, uh, if you don't want to um, create a very, very detailed version of this color chart like we did, you just take some shortcuts on your own. Don't worry about it. Do a, a shorter shorthand version of this too, if you if you feel like you don't want to get into as much detail. But I'm going to show you all the details, everything, the nitty gritty of all the measurements and everything like that. But again, if you want to go and do a quicker version of this, do that. Don't worry about it. If you don't feel like busting out the rulers and all that kind of stuff, don't worry. Just do the best you can. Get a big sheet of paper. This is an 11 by 14 sheet of paper, you know, and I'll show you how you can section it off really easy. And as you go through the video, you'll see I do give you a shortcut how to do this a little more simply if you don't want to get into all, again, all that uh, really minutia of the fine details of things. But in any case, this is a crucial chart you can make for yourself that'll give you the advantage of having all the knowledge you need to have right at your fingertips when you're mixing colors from your Prang Oval 16 set. And as well, if you're going to start working in this set, which is more of the squeeze two paints, then you have this chart that helps you to work with both palettes and understand how you can mix colors from both back and forth. Maybe you're pr painting with two paints right now and you say, Hey, Chris, I want to paint along with your uh, extreme beginner series videos with the Prang set. 
Easy enough. I show you right here. These colors right here are the prime. Uh, that's my normal set. This is sap green. This is um, burnt umber. This is cadmium yellow, cadmium orange. These are all the same colors that are in my normal set that I use. So you'll learn all of that. You'll see how it all works as we go. And uh, hopefully we'll have a fun time doing it. And uh, let's get started. All right. Hi, welcome everybody. Chris Petri here. And thanks so much for coming by. We're actually going to do a great video tutorial here. We're going to actually recreate this that we, uh, we did this color swatch set about six months ago to a year ago, possibly on my channel. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a more neater version of this. So this will be fun. We're going to use some rulers and some, you know, uh, we're going to do some measuring using our rulers. Maybe we'll use a T square a little bit, but I'll show you how I can make more of a really fine tuned version of this, um, color swatch, um, uh, uh, painting here to go along with your Prang Oval 16 set. If you are someone that's maybe watching my channel and you're saying, wow, I'm, a, I'm an extreme beginner. I use the Prang Oval 16 set all the time, but I'm going to start to use two paints soon. And I want to kind of see if I can make that transition, but still kind of use this palette as well at the same time. Or this, this video is great for someone who's, you know, many of you, you're out there, you've been painting with me a long time. And you know that I use my Schmincke palette, right? So I have my Schmincke palette here. So some of you have been painting a long time. You're a professional level painter. You're, you know, um, like an expert level painter in watercolor. And you're saying, yeah, I use palettes like this, like a metal box. And I use this type of palette with all the squeeze two paints, right? But then you're saying, well, maybe once in a while, I want to use this Prangle set to maybe go out and do some outdoor painting or in the backyard do some fun style painting and I don't want to have to take all my two paints out there with me. I can just spritz some water on here and I, and I can get going and start. I mean, this is simple as it can get this, this palette, the Prang Oval 16 palette, you basically, all you have to do is take some, a spritzer bottle and spritz this and in, in a minute later, you're ready to paint. You have all fresh, beautiful paint, moist paint, ready to go. And then you just close up your palette and put it to the side. And whether you come back a week later or a month later, it's the same thing. You just open your palette again, hit it with some spritzer bottle like that with some water and you're ready to paint again. So this, this is the most like easy, you know, user friendly palette for any watercolor artist, whether you're just starting out and you're a number one extreme beginner or whether you've been painting for like five years or 10 years and you're an old grizzled pro and you know, you use two paints all the time, but you can still use this palette. It's still great. It's still versatile. Again, you can take it with you for just a quick uh, jaunt somewhere and, and do some paintings and you don't have to worry about, you know, again, all the bringing your tubes of paint and worrying about if you're going to run out of colors, you know, you just have something like this. Maybe you bring two of these and they're, you know, ex inexpensive and they're fun. And, uh, you know, they're great for compositions and things like that. But the thing I wanted to do was make this color chart so that if you are someone who is really using these, you know, fresh squeeze tube paint all the time, but yet you watch my videos and you see me using this palette, at least you'll know the colors and how they translate into your normal palette that you might be using. Because I use the same colors most all professional watercolor artists use. Like if you'll go out there today and you look at all like the top pros and all the top pros on YouTube and... Uh, all the great professional artists that are out there today, uh, you know, watercolor artists, you're going to find that my palette's pretty much close, you know, within a color or two, pretty close to what everyone else is using. Because most watercolor artists will use the my colors that I use because I've based it off, you know, all the professional artists out there today that are working and they're always sharing their colors that they use. And I just incorporated those in. This happens to be more or less the Charles Reed colors that I use I happen to model myself after Charles Reed, uh, especially his color palettes. I always was really, I think he mentioned to stick with the same colors and, and not really change. And I, and I stuck with that information and I really live by that. My palette has not changed in 12 years. I use the same colors for the last 12 years right here in this palette. So what I'm going to share with you right now is this Prang palette, you can pretty much have all the colors that I use in my normal palette for my, you know, let's say my more advanced or novice or advanced uh, videos, you can have those same colors by using this palette right here. You might have to modify a few colors to get it more exact, but you can still get pretty much all your colors to match all of these. 
So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make the palette for the prang onto this paper and then show you what colors match this palette here basically with the, you know, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, cadmium lemon yellow, yellow ochre, raw sienna, all the colors of my palette, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. I'm gonna take all those colors and put them right here on this brand new color swatch we're gonna make right here. We're gonna do a really more meticulous, really cool uh, chart here, but you don't have to do it this way. You can do it more freely and fun, so I'll show you how to do that too. So if you don't wanna do it as accurate as we're gonna do it right here now, creating this new color swatch for our Prang Oval 16 so that it can match up with our normal palette that we use all the time on my channel, you'll see that we can do it in a more meticulous, really neat, you know, um, exacting way, or you can just do it in a more free, fun way like this. So feel free. If you want to just make a fun, free color chart like this, please do that. You see how I got it? I just did it real simply, right? Lines, really simple with a Sharpie marker. I have a Sharpie marker I guess I used. And uh, I don't have one handy. I'm doing a lot of rearranging in my studio, so I, I happen to misplace a lot of stuff. A lot of things are all over, all, all over in different places right now in my studio, but I use a Sharpie marker, basically. And I, you know, so we'll do the same thing, though. We'll, but we're making it a little more, you know, a little more neat and exacting here so that it looks more, you know, a little more interesting looking. We'll, we'll have a little more fun using the rulers, our pencils. We'll measure a little bit. We'll use our, uh, our measuring, our rulers and stuff like that. So... Let's have a fun time. I just wanted to kind of set the stage here for what we're going to do so you kind of understand why we're going to do this uh, video and this tutorial, but I think you'll have a lot of fun. Stick with me here. Stick with all of us here, and uh, we'll get started, okay, in just a second. All right, so we're going to get uh, started again here. So, again, what I did was for this paper, it's an 11 by 14 Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. We kind of showed you that right in the beginning. And what I did was I just decided to um, put some tape around it. And then I made, uh, basically, um, I did a, a cross here. And I split the paper in fours. So I just basically centered. I centered uh, the paper and made, a, made, it, made an exact four, four space divisions. So this is 13. So 13, half of 13 is six and a half. So I made a hash mark at six and a half because that's 13 inches over this way. Halfway is six and a half inches, 6.5 inches. Then I took my ruler and I said, how wide is my paper now once I've put the tape around it? And I said, oh, it's 10 inches. So that's five inches. Five inches is halfway between 10 inches. And I made a hash mark over here like that. So now you can see I have basically four space divisions in my paper. So this way and this way. Now I have four, basically like four squares here. One, two, three, four. And then what I wanted to do and what I set out to do, and again, you can do this a little more freely. You don't have to get as exacting like I'm doing with measuring everything. But I thought I would do this for those of you that want to maybe work a little bit with your rulers and measure a little bit because that's always helpful, right? If you're a watercolor artist, it's always helpful to maybe start to work a little bit with rulers uh, now and again, just to kind of get familiar with measuring things, centering things. It can help a lot when you're when you're doing your artwork. So that's why I would just mention this is a fun video because you're kind of maybe work a little bit with trying to center some things. You know, again, we got halfway 13 inches. And now we're kind of, you know, we can use a calculator and say, well, what's 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. So that's 6.5 right there. And then we get the hash mark there. And well, what's, um, what's uh, the halfway point of 10 inches? Well, half of 10 inches is uh, 5 inches. And if you type it into a calculator, you know, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So you can do all kinds of, you can use your calculators and your rulers to, you know, make things a little more exacting. And it's kind of fun to do that. And again, it's going to help you in the long run as an artist. Does that make sense? If you kind of get familiar with maybe using the ruler a little bit, measuring, kind of getting some things like that, because you'll you'll often use that when you're doing your paintings, if if, if you want to. You, you can you incorporate that into your uh, the designs of your paintings and working a little bit with measurements and things like that. It can really be helpful. So now that we got our space divisions here for 
quadrants or four squares. Then we're going to say, all right, we have 16 colors here. Eight on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I made these four squares so that I can get four, 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 and four. So we're going to put all of our colors in divisions of four. Four, 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 and four. Now what I want to do is looking at this chart, which we made, which is pretty good. And again, you can do it this way, not, you know, mess around with all the rulers and measuring and all that. You can just kind of do it in a fun way like this too. That's fine. You know, just roughly estimating, you know, dividing the paper in four quarters. And then, so what I'll do is I wanted to get it to be so that, again, we can have four colors here, four colors here, four colors up here, and then four colors over here. Then what I want to do is I want to make room for the colors, the actual nomen nomenclature of the, the words, you know, the actual verbiage here. So I want to make sure I have room for that. So when we're doing our swatches, I want to have room to write down what the colors are. And then I also wanted to make one more row. So let's say I want to make three rows in each of these quadrants or half of this page and half of this page. I want to make three rows, one, two, and three. So if I just take a quick second, <clears throat> if I take a quick second, <coughs> and I say these are the four quadrants here, like this. I apologize, I'm having a, a coughing fit here. Then I want to make, since these are the four quadrants here, one, two, three, and four, that we talked about, you know, dividing our, um, our rectangle here in four quadrants. Now we have the four quadrants, so I'm just kind of, now I want to make these three rows within each of these halves. So one, two, and three. One, two, three rows all the way down. And then another, same thing. So this would be the halfway point. And then another one, two, three. One, two, three. All the way down like that. So now what I want to do is use this palette here and say, okay, I want to have one, two, three, four colors there, and then I want to have a space here for the writing, for the verbiage here. So that's, you know, um, sap green, and so on and so forth there. And then the next four colors down here, one, two, three, four. And the same thing over here for the second half of the page. One, two, three, four, write the colors. One, two, three, four, write the colors. And then over here in the third row, we're going to put um, an additional mix or two of uh, colors that we can make from mixing these together. Some of these colors together to get a better, closer match to our normal palette that we use, which is our standard colors in our normal uh, Schmincke palette that we use all the time on my channel. So basically, we're going to take this palette, mix the colors and put them over here onto this chart, basically. And then, once we get all these colors onto the chart, then we're going to mix a few of these together to get even more closely matching these colors in this palette. Because sometimes you're not going to always be able to use just these straight colors. You're going to have to mix a few of these together, like a f one or two of these together, to get to match this color here in our normal palette that we use, which is our, again, alizarin crimsons and French ultramarine blues, cerulean, Yellow ochres, your cadmiums, cadmium orange, cadmium red, sap green, raw sienna, raw umber, burnt sienna. So all these colors that we use in our normal palette, we can actually get really close to using these colors here if we mix them a little bit. So, But we're going to kind of explain that as we go. And I'm sorry that I put a little bit of magic marker. Somehow it leaked through the back of the paper here. That's just one of the things when you use these Sharpie markers, you have to be careful because they leak. They're very strong and they sometimes go right through the paper. And now I have a little bit of smudging on my 
paper here, but I think that'll be okay. It's kind of fun. It's, you know, one of the things of watercolor. It's messy sometimes. Don't let the messiness of watercolor get to you. Just leave it on there and, you know, call it a day. Okay, so now we've explained that. Let's take another quick break. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we'll start getting our... We'll just put a few lines on here, and we'll start painting and getting our colors onto this chart. All right, be right back. All right, let's keep going here. So, next thing, we're going to find our pencil. And I'm going to take my T-square. I think I found my T-square somewhere. There we go. All right, so here's my T-square. These are very helpful, and these aren't... Uh, too hard to find. You can get these online in your local hobby and art stores. T-squares are nice. You know, you can kind of just, you get a straight, pretty much a perfectly vertical line going up and down your paper this way. Or if you want to get a perfect horizontal line like this, you can get that if you just hold it on the very edge of your paper, assuming that your edge of your paper is straight. So if you're pulling this, or if you're using a pad of paper, um, that's, you know, a per, like a, uh, you know, if you store, you know, you bought from the store online a, a pad of paper, usually the, the paper itself is cut perfectly square so that if you put a T-square anywhere on your paper, you're going to get a perfectly straight line all the way across the paper, evenly uh, divided across the paper, you know, as you go across. So if I put my T-square right on the edge of my paper here, it's going to give me a perfectly level line going across the whole paper or it'll give me a perfectly vertical line going up and down the paper anywhere I move it as long as I'm keeping the T-square along the edge of the paper, basically. All right, so now what we said is we wanted to get those three space divisions on each of these sides of the paper. So on the left side and the right side, we want three space divisions in each of these sides. So then I just take my ruler and I look and I say, well, it's... This is approximately six inches wide right here from here to the center of the paper. So what I'll do is I'll say, all right, well, that's two inches each. Two, four, and six gives me three sections or three columns or three space divisions within this. So there we go. One, two, and three. Now I go over here and I measure this. And I say, how wide is this? And it's the same thing, six inches. So then I just go two inches four inches and six inches is right here. And then I have a perfect one, two, and three space divisions like this. And then I'll take my ruler and you can either use, you can use your T-square from the top or the bottom as long as you're resting your T-square on the edge of the paper. And I'll just do that. I'll just go like this and say, okay, there we go. I line it up with my hash mark I just made at two inches per space. There we go. One. There. Two. And that's three is the center of the paper. And always remember, you can erase these lines later with your eraser once you're done painting your swatches. Our color swatches, once we're done with those, we can erase these pencil lines so you don't have to worry. And this is just going to give us a really nice... Um, very organized quality to this color swatch um, uh, painting we're going to do. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. We want to do four space divisions up here and four down here that represent the four and the eight. So four, four, and then four, four. So we want to go four space divisions here. Then I'll just measure this and take my ruler. You can use inches or centimeters, however you like to measure. But that happens to be four inches for me here in uh, American Standard um, ruler. One, two, three, and four. There we go. Then I come down here and do the same thing. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. Then all I do is I go across here with my ruler. I line up my T-square ruler right up against the paper edge, and that gives me a perfect a level line going right across the paper. Just like that. And then over here, same thing, I hold my ruler right on the edge of the paper. 
And then I can just slide my ruler over this way. As long as I line up my ruler right along that pencil line right there, that's pretty much going to give me a perfect level line going the rest of the way. Just like that. And I'll just do the same thing. And again, these these grid lines that we're making are really important because these are again, it's really going to help the it's going to help us to make sure we get all the colors in just right so that we don't start our color swatch chart here and then the next thing you know we don't have enough room for one of the colors and then it kind of throws us all off. So if you have everything with this grid line like this, you're going to be way better off. You're going to have everything perfectly laid out correctly. No worries, no fussing. Takes a little bit of time to do this, but it's well worth it, so stick with me here. Don't try to go the easy way out and just start sketching lines all over the place. Take your ruler, go carefully. And again, you don't have to do it as exacting as this with like, you know, if you see what I'm doing here and then you look at it and say, oh, I can do that without using the ruler and everything, that's fine. You can even take a piece of paper and fold it to get, we'll show you how to do that. I'll do that actually. We'll do like a, a simpler version of this in a second. Or I'll just show you how you can do a simpler way of doing this without measuring everything. And this is just the bottom of the, the grids. All right, so there we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have the halfway point across the paper, like that. And this is going to be the second half of the paper over here on this half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I started to, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this down here is not in the color swatches. So I'm going to make sure that I erase these lines down here so I don't get confused myself what I'm doing here when I start to paint. And I'll even do something to make it a little easier for myself so I don't go off course here. I'll go back and I'll get my stainless steel ruler here. And I'll just take this and I'll make sure I do a good solid line around the border like that. And again, I'm going to show you the easy version to this in just a second. If you don't feel like doing a lot of this at this time, maybe, maybe eventually you want to do this. Maybe right now you say, ah, I'm not so sure I want to do this right now, but maybe in the future you're going to want to do it. So you can refer back to the video. You can save the video. I hope you'll subscribe too. If you hit that subscribe button down on the right hand side below, this way you're always following along with what my, we're doing here together on my channel. I'm always having new and exciting things going on. On my channel, right now I'm rearranging my studio, so I've been kind of um, not putting out as many brand new videos. I have a couple of videos that I've put out lately that are um, from the last two or three years that I've republished onto um, YouTube. And you might notice that. Some of you might say, oh, Chris republished a video or two lately, but that's only because I'm trying to make better videos for you. So I've got to rearrange my studio and get my lighting and cameras better and do some other things too that I'm working on, which you'll see in a few weeks or so. But anyway, let's keep going. So now we have our definite border here with our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to have room for writing our colors in here and then also for color mixing over here. So we can mix some colors on this side over to here. We could even uh, do some other interesting things, but this is going to be perfect for us. And what I'll do is I'll just make sure I, I'm going to make this extra dark line right in the center, just so we know the halfway point. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Looking good. All right, hey. This is a great time to take another break. Um, I'll come right back in just a second or two. I'm just going to take a quick break. And um, we'll get back to getting our colors now onto this swatch chart. So you'll see how we're going to do this next. But then we're going to also, in just a second, I'm going to show you the quick, easy way to do this without 
doing as much rulers and measuring and things like that. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. You're the artist. Sometimes you just don't want to get into all the hassling of using rulers and measuring and getting too fussy with something like this. And that's fine. Maybe in a year from now you want to do it or six months from now you might say, oh, I'm going to go back to that video and do it this way. But if you want to do it the quicker, easier way, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then we'll keep moving on and we'll get all our colors in here and everything else. Okay? All right. Be right back. All right. I'm back. And I just wanted to say, you know what? You can do this in a quick and easy way without having, you know, too much of the, you know, hassling with the rulers and measuring all that. You can take a sheet of paper and basically... It actually almost fits right in perfect with the same size of our chart here we have. But basically you can take this piece of paper, and this is just a printer paper, but you can use watercolor paper. So I'm just using printer paper, but you can use a sheet of watercolor paper just like this. This is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of printer paper. Again, you can have a larger sheet of watercolor paper. And basically you can just take it and start folding it and say, all right, I'm going to fold it in half, and that's going to give me... That's going to give me my halfway point, like so. And then I'm going to fold it the other way so I have my four quadrants. So I'm going to fold it this way. And there you have it. You fold it this way. Crease it good. Look at that. You have it perfect. You have the four quadrants. Just like we have here, one, two, and three, you know, the four quadrants. And then now you just have to fold it three times on each side to get your three space divisions. So the way you could do that, so maybe you have to, maybe it's better that you would measure this maybe a little bit or sort of get a, a maybe a, like you might say, how, mu how, how much is this? Well, you could use inches or millimeters. I'm going to use millimeters. So that's about 14 inches. 14 millimeter, I'm sorry, 14 centimeters. So this is about 14 centimeters from the halfway po point over to here. So if we divide 14 into three, that's almost five inches each. So if we take a little bit less than five, maybe four and three quarters, and then um, we go another four, four and three quarters here, four and three quarters, four and three quarters about here. Yeah, that gives us about the space division we need. And then you just take your, you take your paper and you make a line on it so you can see that line on your paper where you need to fold it. And you just do that. You just fold it once there. And you just make sure you spin it around so that it's even. And then you take, an, you know, then you take another one. You do that and you fold it one more time. And there you go. And then you have three space divisions there. That's not exactly perfect. You might have to work to get it a little more better than I did it right there, but. Basically, if you want to go thirds, you just have to kind of measure it a little bit. I can do a little better than that. Let's see. What's now? This is, yeah, 14. So 15 is 5 each. Now, if I want to try to, if it's only 14 centimeters, then I just have to divide 1 centimeter less than 5. So I still think about, yeah, four and four and a half. Eight and three quarters. I'm not great with math. Some of you are going to figure this out better than I have. And then I do the same thing. I fold right on that little hash pencil mark we made once, like that, and then fold it again once, like this. That will get you pretty close to what we did here, though, with the ruler and the measurements. And there you can kind of see it. We have it. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then you just have to divide these into four. And then you would just do the same thing. Probably easier just to do it like we did it with the measuring. So that's ten divided by four. Two point five, five. Two point five, seven and a half. And then you would do the same thing, you would fold over your paper. And then you can almost just fold it like that again, just like that. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you get the idea. If you fold your paper instead of 
drawing everything out, you can still sort of get the same idea, but I'm thinking it's easier to do it this way actually. But this would be a more simplified way instead of measuring everything. You could kind of get it a little, you know, pretty close to what we did here. But you can kind of see though, look at the paper, it's a little bit, if you were to do this with watercolor paper, that's going to be really rough on your paper. But you can see here we have a beautiful um, watercolor paper here and we didn't cr crumple it all up and bend it all and try to fold it and things like that. So this is a little bit of a more simple approach, but I think we're all better off if we just try doing it this way measuring. So let's get started. Now to get our swatches within these here, we can just fill these in. Except the only thing is, we probably don't want to, let's make them a little bit smaller. So let's make our color swatches like this. Let's leave a little bit of room, like that. Or you can make them ovals if you want to. I'm going to make them rectangles like this. If you want to make these ovals, that's fine. You can make these oval shapes. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm just drawing these in, you know, drawing these in freehand. You can do them um, with stencils. There's stencils out there you can purchase online. You can make your own stencil by taking a piece of cardboard, like um, a thin piece of cardboard. It could be any type of cardboard or, you know, from a cereal box or something. And you can cut a square that's just the right size that you want it to be. And then you can trace around it to make it perfect as you go. So that works too. You can make your own stencils and things like that. Or you could take a piece of cardboard and trim out a square just perfectly the size you want it to be and then you can just use it and tr you know use it just like a stencil. I've made my own stencils many times in the past for custom things that I'm trying to make that don't really maybe I c couldn't find the stencil that was just right for what I needed to do so I would just make my own stencil by taking cardboard and cutting out a hole in the cardboard to make it you know perfect a, a shape that I might need for a, for a certain painting I was doing. But Again, we're having fun here. Let's, we've taken some time, we've taken our time. Now let's just start getting our colors in. So I'm just gonna go right here and start getting the colors in. So you saw how we did the... And this is the fun part, is this not? <laughs> this is great, this is the fun part. Getting our paints in there, this is really all right, look at that, looking good. So that's our darker green, kind of like a sap green. Then I have a water bucket and a sponge and I just rinse my brush off, touch, tap it on the sponge and then I can come over and get my next color. This is more like a, a lighter, more warmer green. This is kind of like a sap, um, leaf green. I have leaf, a leaf green I use once in a while in my paintings. This reminds me of a leaf green by Holbein. Looks good. So then I'm just going to keep going right down the line here. Burnt. This is sort of like the burnt umber. Burnt umber is a beautiful earth tone. So we're just going to keep working with our colors here. And this Prang Oval 16, I have it set up pretty much the same way that I have my um, normal palette that I use with tube paints. And I just again rinse my brush off, dry off a little bit of the water on a sponge and then go right into my paint here. We have our, this is sort of like our cadmium yellow. So I'm just doing my swatches here one at a time carefully as I go. Take your time, don't, you know, you don't have to go as fast as I go. Uh, I do swatches a lot so I tend to go pretty fast but don't worry about it, take your time. No need to rush through this at all. You want to, if you spend a lot of time drawing out your whole uh, grid here to get all everything all perfect, then you wouldn't want to rush with your paints here as you're doing your swatches. Take your time. Take breaks as much as you need. Take breaks. 
so that everything comes out just right the way you want it to and uh, Good. Okay, now let's go right up top here. We're going to go right into this. And if I lean into my paint, you just saw I leaned into my paint like that. No worries. Um, I just grab a paper towel and the only thing is, that's the only thing you have to be careful of when you're working is sometimes with watercolor, if you lean into paint and then you go back and then you lean down again onto the paper, you could actually smudge all of that paint. So be careful. If you feel yourself like you, you feel like you leaned into something and just dry it off with a paper towel and then you can get started again over here. So I'm using some of this. This is black. This is kind of like an ivory black. It's kind of warm, a warm black. And then white. This is like a Chinese white. Great for smoke effects, mist, fog, smoke, if you need to, you know. Can do all kinds of cool effects with this the white Chinese it's like a Chinese white here and again I leaned again into my paint so again I just remember to wipe off my my hand if I leaned into my paint and this is so much fun isn't it this is just great we're just having fun taking our time making our swatches here this will pay off really well for us because once we get these swatches done, then we can refer back to them and it'll be really helpful when we're doing our paintings to know what colors are translating from our Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set over to our normal watercolor paints that we use on a constant basis. And what I'm thinking is this is a great palette to use, you know. Even if you've been painting a long time, it's a fun pal to use just to create some paintings, some compositions, have fun. These are beautiful colors. These Prang colors are just gorgeous. And we're gonna in a second or two we're gonna we're gonna explain what color for this Prang Oval 16 transitions over to our our normal palette that we use on my channel here. So, so those of you that are brand new that you've never been here before, thank you for stopping by. We're, again, we're doing color swatches, really important, kind of underrated. Not many artists like to do these. I don't see many artists online doing these uh, on YouTube. And so, but I really do like to do them and I've been doing them for a long time, for many years now. And they really do help to kind of like key, help you to key in on your colors and your mixes and things. and. Um, it even helps to just, you know, for memorizing colors and jotting down the names of the colors and the spellings of the colors so that, you know, if you if you need to go out to the store and buy a color, you'll remember the colors that you need to purchase. You'll have the names of the colors in your in your mind. You'll already kind of know what the colors are and you'll have them memorized by heart so you don't have to worry about picking up another color you because because you couldn't remember and I've had that happen years ago when I first started painting I didn't have my colors memorized and then when I would go to the store to buy paints I would be like oh what color was that blue I was using and I couldn't remember and then I'd buy some other color and then again my colors were all like different and I didn't have a standard palette and we'll we'll talk about that in the future I'm going to definitely do another video on the importance of having a standard palette that you use all the time that you stick with with the same colors every time all the time and again, that's an important um, 
discipline to have as a watercolor artist. And I will share, we'll do a whole video on just that, that, that concept because it really is important. It makes your life a lot easier as a watercolor artist if you have your palette all set. You have a standard palette. And you don't have to limit yourself though. You can add colors to your palette or experiment with different colors, but you should have a standard palette. And we'll go into that in another video. I don't want to go into it now, but we'll, I'm going to have a really fun video coming up soon. I promise you. All right, so now this is our Prang Oval 16 palette transitioned over onto our chart. You can kind of see it. I just took one at a time, colors. There we go. It's all there. Now we're going to have the fun a time of just jotting down the names of the colors as they relate to our standard palette right here. Okay, and then once we do that, then we're going to also fine-tune these colors and maybe mix a few of them together and mix another color over here in this row to kind of say, hey, you know what, we can get a little bit better of a color for something like a raw sienna. We don't have a raw sienna right here, or a raw umber really. So we're going to mix raw umber and raw sienna, which are raw umber and raw sienna. And here, we're going to mix some colors here to get us those colors. Okay, so again, <laughs> I'm glad you're sticking with me here. It's not a short video. It's going to take some time to get this uh, all planned out and developed here, but we will get it done. We, we're kind of halfway there. We're more, we're more than halfway there, so <laughs> I hope you're not going to get, uh, um, uh, you know, bored here with what we're doing. I, I know you're not bored, actually, and we're just going to, you know, it does take a little bit of time, though, to develop this kind of an idea of getting a real good... Um, transition from our palette here, our Oval 16 Prang, to our normal palette with our two paints. That's all it is. We're just going to do that. We're going to get it done. So we'll be right back. All right, we are working continuously here to get this done. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to transition um, the, the, the names of our colors onto the paper. So now what I would suggest doing is doing it in pencil first, putting down the names of the colors here, first in pencil, and then go over it with a Sharpie marker once you have all the spellings of all the colors correct. So you might, as you're drawing, or as you're writing one of the colors, you might make a mistake on the, the um, spelling of something. Don't worry. If you're using pencil first, you can just do a quick erasing of it, and then you can uh, rewrite it and have it written down in pencil first, and then when you're all done writing everything out in pencil, then you can go over it with a Sharpie marker. And you just take your Sharpie marker and you trace over the tops of the, the you can, I'll, I'll show you, you know, I'll show you how I do it. You know, you just trace over your pencil lines with your Sharpie marker or, you know, any color you want to use. I happen to use black here. I like black a lot, but you know, you can use red or blue, green, whatever colors you want to use. You know, it's up to you what you want to use for your colors, for your markers over the top. But the first thing I'll do is I will, um, I think I'm going to make a couple lines here. So I'll make three lines really lightly, just one. Maybe I'll just go with two lines. Maybe I'll go with two lines here. Maybe I'll go with the same lines along the edges here like this. Like that. All right, so we're going to call this sap green. Sap green. There we go. This one. I'm going to call this um, olive green. I'm not going to call that olive green. I'm going to call it actually what I think I really, this looks more like leaf green. Leaf green, which I'm used to. Holbein makes leaf green. This is, you know, I definitely, again, I'm using light. I'm doing a little light pencil line just like this, two, one, two, and three level, so I'm making this top line level with the top of this, and then this one level with the bottom of this, and this one right in the center, and this just gives me my 
two two uh, areas that I can write my my colors in. So this one is burnt umber, burnt umber. Okay. This one here I'm going to call cadmium yellow. Light pencil line, just a super light pencil line, just so you, you don't go off course and start writing up on an angle this way or an angle that way. Does that make sense? So if you just do those quick little level lines, and you can use a ruler too if you want, but I'm just, I can do it by hand and just approximately a level line across that way. And you know, you can kind of see it's kind of level. You know, you don't want to be writing up like this unless you want to make them on an angle, and you can do that too. You can make an angled line if you want. You can be as creative as you want with this. It doesn't matter. You can do script or writing or, you know, anything you want to do. It's up to you. And this one I'm going to call cadmium. Cadmium yellow. That closely resembles cadmium yellow. This one definitely looks cadmium orange, so I'm going to do this. Cadmium orange. And you'll take your time and spell these correctly, and you'll reference your internet if you have to, just for spelling, or if you can see mine, okay, you can use mine. This one here, I would call this, see this is a tough one here, I would call this cadmium um, orange, um, I, I don't, there are colors that, I'm trying to think what color this might be more, cadmium orange deep, yeah I think it's a cadmium orange deep, so I'm going to do that, and then to make this fit on here I'm just going to make this a little sm smaller, the lettering, cadmium orange deep. A little darker orange, a little more red in there. This one here, I call this a, um, this to me is like a cadmium red. Cadmium red. And this one here is a lizard and crimson. Pretty much looks like a lizard and crimson. Could be a permanent rose, but we'll call this one a lizard and crimson. There we have it. So we have all these, and they're all spelled correctly. So again, I've done so many of these charts I kind of know how to spell these by heart. When I first started I would make mistakes, I wouldn't know how to spell them exactly correctly, but then after doing these so many different times, doing these charts, now I just have them all memorized so I can, I know the spelling of them pretty much by heart now, but in the beginning I didn't know, I would have to, you know, maybe re erase and re, you know, re um, write the, uh, the names of the colors. This one here I know is an ivory black, it's a warm black. It's kind of got like black with maybe a little bit of burnt umber in there to make it like a warmer black. Versus if it was like a Payne's Gray, it would have more of a blue mixed in with the black. So this is a warmer black. So we'll call this one ivory black. And this one here we're going to call Chinese white because it's kind of a chalky looking white. So that looks like Chinese white to me. I use Chinese white again sometimes for smoke and um, haze and different effects, Chinese white. And then this one here, I'm going to maybe have to take a break and reference some things because I kind of already, getting into some of these purples and blues, um, I think I pretty much, I'm just going to do these quickly as we go. Just getting my level lines on there, so when I'm drawing my the names of my colors, 
This one I'm going to call um, Ultramarine Violet. Ultramarine Violet. Awesome color by Windsor Newton. I use that all the time. My Ultramarine Violet is what I is really my what I consider my best Ultramarine Violet for my palettes. This for my colors. This is a, like a um, French Ultramarine Blue. French Ultra Marine, and we'll do one there like that, blue. And then this one here, I'm going to consider this one my um, Cobalt Blue. Actually, this one, I'm going to really, I've used uh, Peacock Blue. Peacock blue I use. It's in my palette once in a while. It's one of those like colors I don't always use, but I do sometimes put it into my palette for special paintings. And, and this one definitely, um, peacock blue was definitely what I would consider this here. It's not really like a cobalt blue. It's got a little more, it looks like it's got maybe a little more uh, green in it, I think. This one here, I would consider a... Um, this one too. This one I would consider maybe actually this one is probably more like a uh, this one might be the peacock blue. That's why I say use the eraser because sometimes you might get lose track of your colors and then you know you might have an issue so Peacock blue. I think this we could go with. I think we could call this a um, cobalt blue. I think this could be a cobalt. I'll call that a cobalt blue. And this one here is a Viridian, which is a kind of like a, a turquoise green, Viridian green. So this is definitely Viridian. It looks extremely close to Viridian. All right, now. What we'll do is, right, bef uh, right before we take our, well, we're going to go over this with the Sharpie marker next, and then I'm going to try to figure out what this is. I think that this is pretty much, I would consider this, I'm just going to, this is pretty close to lavender, so I'm just going to call this lavender. It sure looks close to a lavender there. Lavender. So we'll call that lavender. And then we can sort of, we're just basically, maybe I'll do this off camera so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all this. Maybe I'll do this off camera and then when we come back it'll be all completed and then we'll just do our few mixes of colors that we might want to do. But you can kind of see I'm just taking my Sharpie and just tracing over my pencil lines now because we know everything looks good. I spelled everything correctly. And if I had a couple little issues where I kind of wasn't sure on my colors and I had to think about it and maybe erase a few things, I did that with pencil first. Now I know I got everything just right. And then now you go in with your Sharpie marker and go right over the top of your pencil like that. And then once you have that completed, then you can just basically erase all the pencil lines like that. And you can kind of see that works out perfect. You can erase all the pencil lines and then you don't even see them actually. And then you just have a perfect Sharpie marker, sap green, and then you can even erase around your colors if you want to. And then eventually if you want you can take even a larger eraser and you can erase all these grid lines if you want to. So it's up to you if you want to leave the grid lines on. You can go over the grid lines with some magic marker with some Sharpie. Or I think what we're going to do is we're going to erase all these pencil lines once we're done 100% with everything. Then we'll erase all the pencil lines. I think that'll look actually beautiful. So let's uh, come back in a few minutes. I'll again off camera while you're taking a break and I'm taking a break. I'm going to keep working, get these all in with the um, Sharpie marker, all the colors, the, um, the spelling of all the colors down here, the type. 
And then once we're done with that, we're going to be almost done. We're just going to do a couple mixes to kind of fine tune our mixes to get a couple more colors that we can kind of closely match to our, uh, again, our normal everyday palette that we use on my channel for the most part uh, here. Okay. All right. So I'll be right back in just a second. All right, we are back and we're having even more fun. What we're gonna do now is actually take these colors that we just put out on our chart, which is the Prying Oval 16 colors, and we're gonna actually try to uh, create from these colors uh, mixes that are, again, colors that we have in this palette, which is our Schmincke palette that we use you know, pretty much on all of our other videos besides our Extreme Beginner videos. We're going to try to get some more of these colors, subtle colors in here that we didn't create on our chart or we didn't put in here because obviously this is the prang chart, prang chart basically. So, but we are kind of giving you the names of the transition colors over. So this we're calling a sap green, but maybe the prang over 16 set comes with a different color chart that gives you a different name for it. But again, not to confuse things, but again, the whole idea of this was you, you pretty much, you just want to kind of understand if you're maybe, like again, if you're painting a long time with me and you say, oh, well, I'm watching you do your Extreme Beginners videos, Chris, and I, but I'm not using the Prang palette. I really don't want to use that palette. I want to use my normal everyday palette that I use, which is something like this. Well, then I'll just give you these colors here so you can kind of transition these over and then you kind of see that these are the essentially, the, essentially the colors that are, are here that relate to your tube colors that we always use, you know, like our Windsor Newton um, colors or our Holbein colors or Daniel Smith or, um, you know, all the other, basically the brands that are out there, you'll pretty much find. They have a lot of the similar names. I use Windsor Newton uh, and Holbein paints mostly for the most part, 90% of the time. So these are the colors that you would see on the Windsor Newton and, and uh, Holbein colors that I have here. So. Now what I'm doing is saying, you know what, I have this palette here that I use on an everyday basis and you see them in all my videos and you're saying, well, Chris, well, where's, where's uh, 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 raw umber? I don't see raw umber on here. Well, we're going to create one. So we're going to take this chart or this actually this list that I created where I said, what colors don't I have on this chart right here that are colors that are in this palette? And I came up with all of these colors here, which are quite a few actually. So... Let's take these colors and which are in this palette and mix them and put them here in this third row. So this third row. So you'll see how we can take these colors, which are the Prang Oval 16 colors, mix them a little bit with uh, between each other and we'll get the colors we need to, to get the raw umbers we need or the cad lemon yellow that we need because we don't have a cad lemon yellow, we just have the cadmium yellow. So we'll go right along here on this list and I'll put this list over here on the side. And uh, again, we're trying to recreate this palette basically with this palette so that you can, whatever videos you're watching of mine, whether it's an extreme beginners video, or if you're watching one of my normal, um, you know, uh, videos where I'm using my normal paint set that I use constantly, my normal palette, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, use both. You, you can, you can actually work with both, uh, videos, you know, any, any video you see an extreme beginners video, and vice versa. If you're working with the pa this pr prang palette, and you're an extreme beginner, and you're just you maybe you're like a month, two months, six months into painting, or a year into painting even already, you can use your prang palette and mix the same colors that are in this palette right here, that I use for my my you know normal palette that I use pretty much all the time, and uh, you'll you'll get the same results pretty much. Okay, so let's keep working on this. And um, not too difficult. We're just going to zip this over here and say, okay, let's start with the first one on the list, raw umber. We'll do the same thing over here. The only thing is we're going to make this, I would say let's make this a little bit uh, smaller over here. So we're going to make our this list of colors a little smaller so that we can fit in the, um, the names of the colors and the, the actual color swatch at the same time. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make this one a square like this, like that. Now I'll find, let's make an olive green. Since we're near the greens over here, let's go with the olive green. So what I'll do is I'll 
I'll just I'll take this and say, okay, we're working on olive green right now. So let's I'll just do a red marker. Okay, we're going to work on olive green. Let's try to get that in. Okay, so we'll just take our colors again. So olive green, basically olive green is just sort of like a leaf green except a little bit less bright. That's a little bit bright for an olive green. So to make an olive green, I'll take this. Put that in there like so. Rinse the brush off and then go in and get a little bit of burnt umber, which is brown. A brownish color. And just mix a little bit of the brown into that green there. And then a little bit of that green, more green. And I just mix it on the paper until that looks good. That to me is an olive green. With a little bit of burnt, touch of burnt umber into this leaf green, this green here gives me that olive green, which is that little warmer green. All right, perfect. And then I'll just do my, my, my lines there. And then olive green. Perfect. Now we said we also wanted to do a chromium of oxide. Olive green, I think I did that twice over here, so that's, that's good. Yeah, let's do chromium of oxide. Okay, so we're just going to start up here and do the same thing. We'll put a square there. A little smaller than this. And we'll put our lines on there so we can fill in our information, our, our nomenclature for the colors. So chromium of oxide is kind of like a dullish green. So I'm going to take this. like that. And then I'm going to try to do something to make this duller. I'm going to go with a touch of black. And then go back in and I'll grab some more there. More green, but I did put that little bit of black in there. I think that's going to kind of make that a little bit like a chromium oxide. It dulls it down quite a bit. Experiment as you go. I'm not saying I'm the most, uh, you know, the world's foremost authority on mixing colors, that's for sure. But I try to get it as best I can. And I think adding that little bit of ivory black or this black here to that lighter leaf green color does dull the green down enough to give it kind of that feeling of like the chromium of oxide, which is kind of hard to replicate, but we'll, we'll try it anyway. We made an attempt to try it and, and get it done correctly. So this is chromium. Chromium of oxide. Okay, that one's good. Now, let's do, let's just kind of work our way down with the colors so we're matching the colors. Like, so next would be um, yellow ochre, right? And cadmium and raw umber. So let's go with raw umber next. So we'll do this raw umber next. And then raw umber is basically, if we look here at raw umber, it's sort of like a raw sienna or raw umber, I mean a raw sienna or a yellow ochre, with just a little more brown in it. So we're kind of, we're pretty much can go with our yellow, like this, and then a touch of brown.
little more yellow. And then as we mix it around really well, that's pretty close to a, a raw umber, I think. Okay, now we'll cross this off the list. Raw umber is good, so we have that completed. Let's do uh, yellow ochre next. Pretty close to raw umber and uh, raw sienna. So let's do yellow ochre first. And we'll do this here. This is raw umber. And then we're going to do yellow ochre, I think we said. And now for yellow ochre, uh, the same thing, yellow, that we used here, which is our cadmium yellow, basically. And then again, a touch of brown. A little more. Okay, yellow ochre, just a touch of brown, not too much. Raw umber, more brown than, than uh, the yellow ochre. And then we said we wanted to go with uh, cadmium lemon yellow. Cadmium yellow lemon. Now to get our cadmium yellow lemon you can kind of see here this is our cadmium yellow lemon here so to get that we're going to need to add yellow and make it a touch cooler so to get that a little bit cooler we could add a little bit of green to it Okay, so we added that little bit of coolness to it with some green, with some light leaf green. And that gives us that little bit of that cool lemony look to it. Okay, that's good. Let's cross that one off the list. So we kind of want to just keep things uh, organized here. So we cross our uh, colors off the list as we go. So we got yellow ochre. We did that. Here, cameo lemon yellow, we just did that one right here. Raw sienna, we did, right? We didn't do raw sienna, so let's do raw sienna actually. Right there, we didn't do raw sienna, let's do that. Raw sienna is pretty much like yellow ochre, so let's, let's put it in there anyway. Raw sienna, let's do that. Just so we can kind of say that we really kept strict here and got our colors that we use all the time. Raw Sienna. And Raw Sienna is that yellow that we use. Cadmium Yellow here. And then just a touch of um, Burnt Umber.
raw sienna incidentally is a little bit more transparent or is a lot you know is a transparent color actually versus yellow ochre is an opaque color so yellow ochre when you work with the yellow ochre you probably many of you notice when you work with the yellow ochre it's kind of like it's not as transparent so it kind of looks a little bit more opaque when you're putting it on whereas raw sienna is a little more you know transparent it looks a little more lighter looking like you can see the light through the bottom of underneath your pa uh, paper you can see the light kind of you know reflecting back because there's not uh, the opacity that the yellow ochre might have if you're working with two paints. The Prang Oval 16 colors that we're using here, one thing about the Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set you will notice is it, it the colors are very opaque. So when you're working with them you're not going to get that real um, thin looking uh, colors that you might get with some of the tube colors. So that's one of the advantages of using the tube colors is you really do get more versatility with your transparent colors. Again, these colors are more opaque, the, the um, prangs, prang colors. But in the beginning when you're just starting out, you're really not going to notice all that too much. You kind of, your eye gets better as you work and you'll, you'll notice these things as you go. Okay, so now we have the raw sienna completed. And then we're working down now towards our red colors. So what do we have for our red colors? What do we want to do here? We have um, rose matter we can do. Let's do rose matter. And let's do burnt sienna too. So let's do burnt sienna first and then rose matter. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do burnt sienna and then rose matter. Okay, burnt sienna. We're going to have for burnt sienna, it's going to be red. Like this. And then some burnt umber. And if it goes a little bit too much burnt umber, you lift up a little bit with a paper towel or a tissue and go back in and get some more red until you kind of get the mix you're looking for. And burnt sienna is sort of like, this is like a burnt sienna, my uh, mechanical pencil. And it's here too. Okay, and that is burnt sienna. Okay, now we're going to do the um, rose matter. So rose matter is basically this alizarin crimson color here, like so. Just more transparent and lighter. So you can actually make this rose matter by just making it more transparent. Maybe there's a touch of some um, lavender in there. But that's our rose matter color basically. Looks beautiful, really transparent. Okay, and we're working from our list. Now we have um, two blues that we need to do and one Payne's gray. All right, so we have t Prussian blue and cerulean blue. Let's make those. And let's make those, um, let's make Payne's gray first because it's right up here by ivory black and we need to use ivory black. So let's do that. Okay, so we have our Payne's gray. We'll just put that in. Payne's Gray. Then we'll use for Payne's Gray our black here. Rinse off the brush, dry off the paint, and we're going to add some blue.
So when you add some, this would be our uh, French ultramarine blue to your Payne's gray, to your uh, ivory black, I should say. If you add French ultramarine blue to French ultramarine blue here to your ivory black, that gets you over to your Payne's gray. which is a cool black, which has cooler blue tones in there. And then we said, what was next? We had to do our um, Prussian blue. Let's do Prussian blue next. Okay, so we have our Prussian blue. Russian blue is a kind of a cooler, uh, uh, like a, a cooler, cooler blue. It's not, a, it's kind of a green, a blue with some green in it. So let's use um, some French ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, I mean French ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, what we're calling our cobalt blue. Let's mix those two together to see if we can get like a Prussian blue. And we might need to add a little bit of green to that. I think green will look good in there. And then back in with some more blue. And then if you go in with too much paint and you think it's kind of getting too flooded with paint and water, lift up a little bit carefully with your tissue Dry off some of your paint on your tissue with your with your brush or your uh, and we'll see if we can get the Prussian blue by just kind of working the colors there. Okay, that looks good. Prussian blue. And uh, let's see how that looks if we kind of... I'm trying to go in. My Prussian blue is right here. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I think that looks pretty close. Okay, so that's I'm pretty happy with that. The Prussian blue looks pretty good. And let's go with our, let's see what we have left on our list here. So we have um, Prussian Blue, we got that. Uh, Payne's Gray we did. All we have left now is Cerulean Blue. So let's do Cerulean Blue and we'll be finished. We'll have a complete list of all of our colors that we need that we can mix from our Prang Oval 16 to create all the colors of our palettes that we would ever use on this channel. So you have all your Prang colors here, and then you have all your colors that you can mix with your Prang colors into the colors that we always use on our other videos where we use our uh, Schmincke palette with all of our standard tube colors. So this is an ultimate color chart for you. So if all of you work on this and you do this diligently, you will have a, a perfect color chart to always you can reference and figure out your color uh, colors as you go in your compositions and paintings. That's all it is, really. So let's uh, do our cerulean blue. And then cerulean blue is pretty close to what we have here. With our cobalt blue, or peacock blue even. Peacock blue is pretty close to the cerulean, except we need to gray it down a little bit with some brown. So I just tap a little bit of brown 
burnt umber. Touch more, just a little more. And I like to mix it around until I get it to look pretty good. And I think that looks good. That looks like a cerulean blue, which is basically our, we used the peacock blue and we added a touch of the burnt umber to it to just tone it down a little bit, mellow down that bright looking high, you know, that really exciting pe peacock blue. You add a little bit of this burnt umber to that and look how good that looks. It looks great. Okay, well, look how fantastic we did. We did this whole color chart. Yes, it did take some time. I hope you had the patience to work through it. And I'm hoping that maybe even if you worked halfway through it and you got tired and you just, you're watching now and you didn't finish it, I hope you're going to go back and finish it and, and start from the top and, and do it and get it completed. Because once you have this completed, it's really a great chart you can reference at all times for your colors working on my channel. And again, if you haven't uh, subscribed, I hope you're going to subscribe on the right hand side below. I thank you for coming by. Thank you. And if you're brand new here, welcome. Great to have you here. I know you're going to do great with watercolors. It's all just about starting at point A and then working and just enjoying the journey. It's a long journey. It's years and years and years. And you can just work at your own pace whenever you want. There's no pressure. You just start at your starting point here, page one, the starting point, and you just go from here and you just keep working and you work a little bit at a time here and there. You work on your skills. The more you're watching our videos here, you're going to learn a lot just by watching videos. So if you're too tired and you don't want to maybe paint one day or two days or here and there, no problem. If you're just watching the videos, you're going to pick up a lot of stuff. You're just, you're soaking it in, so to speak, um, you know, and thinking about things and it's, you're watching things and that's kind of going into your mind and you're going to absorb a lot of things. So always remember if you're not, uh, you know, keen on painting one day or a few days here and there once in a while, you're just watching videos and you're picking up a lot that way too. So always remember, it's just a matter of doing a little bit all the time and you're going to be fine. You're going to do a great job with watercolors. So we'll be back very soon. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for all your great comments. I want to say thank you for, for all of you that have supported me over the years. Thank you for purchasing my new book. I have a new book out and I hope you'll check it out right down in the uh, below there. You can check it out on Amazon. I have a new book out. It's great. It's got all my best of my best paintings in there. So you can pick up the book if you want and you can work right from my book. You open up the book and you just start painting right from the paintings that I have in my book, the, the photographs of my paintings. And I give lots of good uh, in direction on what I'm doing in my paintings in my book. So you can kind of follow along and at your own pace and, and learn a lot from that too. So that's a great resource for you if you want to get more interested in painting watercolors and kind of following along with what I do and the kind of things I like to paint and so forth and my methods and techniques. So in any case, thanks so much again for coming by everybody. We'll see you soon. And we have some more exciting videos coming up uh, just in a little while. So stay tuned. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.